Breaking tonight, new developments in a Washington showdown that could explode into a very ugly political crisis. For months, we have heard growing warnings from the right and the left about the president's use of executive power and his habit of going around Congress. I agree entirely that the president cannot simply refuse to apply or enforce a law for policy reasons. The center of gravity is shifting, and that makes it unstable. And within that system, you have the rise of an uber presidency. There could be no greater danger for individual liberty. If the people come to believe that the government is no longer constrained by the laws, then they will conclude that neither are they. As James Madison warned centuries ago in Federalist Number 47, the accumulation of all powers, legislative, executive, and judiciary, in the same hands may justly be pronounced the very definition of tyranny. Well, the House yesterday voted to proceed with a lawsuit designed to challenge the president's aggressive use of his pen and his phone. And it didn't take 24 hours for the White House to send a response, announcing it would issue a new executive order, <laughs> continuing the kind of bare-knuckled political brawling that a young senator from Illinois once promised to overcome. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. There is not a black America and a white America and Latino America and Asian America. There's the United States of America. Late today, the potential showdown got one step closer to critical mass when Republicans could not round up enough votes to pass a bill aimed at dealing with the recent surge of illegal immigrants at our southern border. The White House wanted over $3 billion. The Senate seemed okay with $2 billion. The House, controlled by the GOP, said no to $659 million. Enter White House advisor Dan Pfeiffer, who tweeted out the following, quote, by pulling their own bill, the House GOP once again proves why the president must act on his own to solve problems. And the question tonight, what might that presidential solution look like? Will the president, who promised to unite us, drive a huge wedge into America by granting amnesty to millions of illegal immigrants? If he does, who gets the blame? Who pays the price? And what happens to the republic as a result? Dr. Charles Krauthammer, author of the book Things That Matter, which has been on the bestseller list for over nine months now, joins me with more. Charles, good to see you. That's the question. Pleasure will will he here. do it? Is he prepared, as was reported over the weekend, to issue some sort of executive order that would effectively grant amnesty to up to five million illegal immigrants? Well, that's the signal that the White House has been sending almost nonstop for the last couple of days. And I suspect that when September comes, they will do it. And to argue against it, you don't have to go far afield. You've got the president's own words, openly, publicly, on camera, repeatedly. Let me, let me just jump asked, in because we have sure. that. We have that sound bite. To, and to not enough show people are showing this to the American right. public. But the president said this in March of 2011 to Univision. Listen. With respect to uh, the notion that I can just suspend deportations through executive order, uh, that's just not the case. There are enough laws on the books by Congress that are very clear in terms of how we have to enforce uh, our immigration system that for me to simply through executive order ignore those congressional mandates uh, would uh, not conform with my appropriate role as president. It could not be any more explicit. Go ahead. And he has said it on many other occasions. On one other occasion, where he said he is simply not allowed to do it under the Constitution, he ended by saying, we are a nation of laws. So were he to do now, in September, what he has long and repeatedly said, he is constitutionally prohibited from doing, that would be a grave and irrefutable a violation of his duties as president. The duty, it, the Constitution could not be more clear. The president swears an oath to faithfully execute the laws. He's not allowed to make the laws. He's not allowed to change the laws. He isn't allowed to unilaterally suspend the laws, which is exactly what they are saying they are going to do. This will be a gross violation of the Constitution. And it will be, I mean, he's done now a whole series of these. He's done it on drug, on, on, on drug enforcement. He has done it already with immigration with the so-called DREAM Act, where he unilaterally and lawlessly declared that if you came here as a child, 
you can stay. That could be a good he or a bad that, policy. He did that after that soundbite we just played. And the Congress didn't stop him, Charles. So, right. it, you know, what is to stop them if he does it again? Well, as you say, he's done it shamelessly. And the Congress has been relatively supine. Now, one of the things that Congress has done, because it doesn't want to go to impeachment and to cause a constitutional crisis, is to try to bring this lawsuit, which will give the House of Representatives as an institution standing, in other words, the right to show the injury to the powers of the it House may. in a court of law. Now, that will either succeed or not. I think it has a reasonable chance of at least being heard by the Supreme Court. And that would be a way to corral and constrain this unrestrained and illegal power. What if it doesn't? I mean, if, that, if, if by some miracle that lawsuit plays out very quickly, unusually quickly, and perhaps gets thrown out on the papers for lack of standing by the House of Representatives, then they've, they've, they've tried and failed. And now, you know, according to Andy McCarthy, uh, you know, former prosecutor, he, he says, look, they've got two other options. They can, they can control, they can use their power of the purse to defund his efforts, or they can impeach him. And that is, you know, the I word has been getting a lot of play lately and not favorable. Look, the I word has been used mostly by Democrats who are trying to gin up their, uh, the, the money machine by saying that's all Republicans are talking about. That is the last thing Republicans want to do. I believe that the president legalizes millions of Americans here illegally in contravention of the law of the Constitution and of his own declarations. That is in principle an impeachable offense. But as a practical matter, there is zero chance it would be uh, that the president would be impeached and convicted by the Senate. And there is a 100 percent chance that it would be political suicide for Republicans and could ensure that there's a Democratic successor to Barack Obama. So if you're being hard headed politically and you're worried about this constitutional violation, I would say you don't impeach. That would be a terrible mistake. What you try to do is to elect a Republican. Remember, executive order can be reversed. And I think it would be the first order of business for a Republican upon election in 2017. The president always says, don't get mad, vote. He says, I always tell people, don't get mad, go out that's, there and vote. That's exactly where this has to be fought out, not with impeachment, unfortunately. Just to say for the record, he only has the power, even arguably, to defer deportation. He does not have the power to wave a magic wand and say everyone is legal. He has the power to defer deportation, and that, you know, by definition could be reversed, the deferral. Charles, good to see you tonight. Pleasure. Thank you.